Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I wanna share with you how you can use Carbide Create and your CNC to surface your material to give you a perfectly flat top. You can use this method to surface anything from slabs to your cutting boards. I recently decided to make my first cutting board for a really good customer of mine, and I decided to not only make a cutting board, but I decided to make it an inlay cutting board. So I really stepped out of my comfort zone. And so I became pretty confident in how to do this. Let me show you what I did in Carbide Create to get the exact outcome that I needed to be able to complete it. All right guys, so let's jump into Carbide Create. In the setup screen, you're gonna to wanna to enter the dimensions of your workpiece, whatever that may be. And so these are the dimensions that I have for this particular example. So once you have your dimensions set up, everything else you gotta fill out you know, accordingly to your material. Once you have your setup created, this grid is going to be the size of your material. And what I like to do to be able to surface the entire surface of my material is I like to create a vector that is larger than the material, typically an inch larger than the dimensions of my actual piece. This just ensures that the piece is going to be completely surfaced. And so to create the vector, if you don't know, uh, just come over here to the create vector, create a rectangle or whichever shape applies and go ahead and set up the dimensions for that piece. And once you have the dimensions set up for your vector, come over to the transform area and in this align vectors option, go ahead and click that and then go ahead and align it center. With that done, we simply now have to create our tool path and so to do that, we need to come over to Toolpath, click Pocket, make sure you have the correct surfacing bit. I already have my surfacing bit set here. Let's go ahead and edit it because Carbide Create does not have a ramping feature or a feature that allows for the surfacing bit to come into the material through the sides or the edges. It's actually going to plunge into the material. After doing a couple of cutting boards and redoing them several times, the depth per pass that I ended up liking is 0.05 and the plunge rate at 10, feed rate at 100, RPM at 18,000. Guys, I'm no expert on the plunge and feed rates or depth per pass, so if you have any feedback, please let me know. But what I did see through these numbers is that when the surfacing bit plunges into the cutting board in my example, it wasn't grinding. It didn't sound as if I was working the bit or the router too hard. Once you have your surfacing bit set up, your max depth again depends on how much material you're trying to surface. My favorite max depth usually is 0.02, but because I'm usually only surfacing cutting boards, the variety in the height of the different strips require me to go a little bit deeper. So I usually start at 0.05. Once we have that max depth set up, let's go ahead and click OK and save the G code. Now that we have the file saved, let's go ahead and move over to Carbide Motion. Once we're connected to the cutter, we need to change our settings prior to initialization. We need to disable the bit setter since we are doing a surfacing pass. And so we'll click OK. And then now we're going to initialize the machine. To zero my X and Y axis, I like to use a 30 degree V bit because it's thinner than the surfacing bit. And I'm able to get a better gauge of where my X and Y axis will be. I also like to set my X and Y slightly to the left of the board and slightly in front of the material or the board. This will also ensure that you're surfacing the entire material. Once I have the X and Y axis set, I change over to my surfacing bit and zero my Z axis on top of the material using the paper method. Let me stop right here real quick and explain one thing. The max depth and the depth per pass were both set at 0.05. Therefore, the entire surfacing job was done in one single pass. In the second example, I still use a depth per pass of 0.05, but my max depth is gonna be greater because I have to surface a lot more material. If you're needing to surface oddly shaped pieces of material, for example, when you do an inlay cutting board, I follow the exact same process. All I do is find the rough dimensions of that piece and then in Carbide Create, I create a vector larger than that to be able to ensure that I surface that entire piece. The only difference is that when I zero out my X and Y axes, I use two pieces of scrap wood to create a square. I use the bottom left hand corner of that square to set my zeros for my X and Y. As you can see here, there's more material to get through. Once a pass is completed, the CNC will repeat this cutting path until it reaches the max step. This video shot is showing the completion of the first pass and the start of the second pass. So as you can see, this method works and I gave a sigh of relief at this point. 
So here's a sneak peek into the final product. Make sure that you're subscribed because I will be uploading a video on the process I took to make this. And as always, guys, I appreciate you guys following and, of course, all the support that I've been receiving. We'll see you on the next one.